again and welcome to the Heaven Project Presents Today with Seth. In this video, we will be continuing or we'll be taking a look at the part 2 of Unit 4. So this is the second video. We will continue from you no know, structure of definitions. And I'm going to look at extension techniques. And afterwards, we'll look at intention techniques and then we'll look at definition by genus and difference. So let's begin. Now, we know that the extension is a, refers to all and only those objects which possess the set of attributes which the general term refers to. Now, so to to define some to to, to identify the extension or to define the extension, there are three techniques you use. The first is by what? Give an example. So a pen. The intention being a writing instrument. So you can give examples like what? Pen, pencil, chalk, crayon, color pencil, right? And ostensive definition is just referring to what? Pointing. So I have my marker over here, right? I have my marker. I will point at the marker. Oh, you know, this is the marker, right? But then you can ask yourself that a. Hey, what about things that we can, we cannot point? You know, things that are, are, are imaginary or they are informative, right? So with those things, you can't point at them like this. That's where crazy or extensive definitions come in. That's dealing with what? Pointing and describing. Let's say a unicorn. No one has ever seen an, no one has ever seen unicorn before right so you can only point at it by describing it right or also that oh not you know the unicorn is a unicorn is like a horse with a horn so these are the extensional techniques by example ostensive point we see ostensive point and point by describing so we are pointing it out right but right. so you are this, this one, this crazy ostensive has to do with what? Description. Let's take a look at the intentional techniques. Yes, so now you look at what? intentional techniques and senses. Let's deal with the techniques first. Now, when you're talking about the intention, you know that the intention is referring to the set of attributes. Um, which the general term refers to and this set of attributes must be possessed by all the objects that will fit into the extension very well so now we look at synonymous definition now you can you when you are working on your intention you can also use what synonyms right maybe i want vehicles right you can also say i want cars because they are, they are similar in meaning exactly the other technique is operational definition right so, with operational definition, you can have something like, who is a CEO student? Some of you like, okay, you know, you see, a CEO student is somebody who goes to the library every day, or somebody who learns at least four hours a day, you know. Or a CEO student is somebody who has all A's, or their lowest is always B. Right, so these are operational definitions. That means that any individual who who fits this criteria will belong in the extension of what serial student, right? So, so one of the operational definitions we give: someone who goes to the library at least four hours, right? Or someone who has A's and their lowest are B. So all these individuals will be able to fit into what the extension for serial students because of the intentional technique used over here, right? Another example is saying, "That girl is beautiful. Oh, look at her." Look at her fair skin, look at her shape, right? No, a shape like that, like this. No, they give the shape like this. That's a beautiful girl. So that's somebody's. And I'm intentionally using this example because it's going to matter when you talk about the senses, right? So, her. No, and someone can also say that, oh, that's a beautiful girl. Is is the way you speak or the way you walk, you know, the way you look. You know, these are all ways of 
refining your intention through oops yeah how better now something was worrying me yes yeah, so that's how operational definitions work, right? Look for an action or something that. So in that situation, we need to define what a beautiful girl was, and we felt like beautiful girl was not enough. So we look for an operational definition so that we can really be more specific. Now, definition by genius and difference. That is actually going to form the last part of our video. So we we'll, won't we'll talk about that now. So intentional sense, well, objective, conventional, and subjective, right? Now, objective means that one way, you know, one part, right? So with the objective definition, with the objective sense, it's simply referring to all the objects that possess the qualities that have been listed in the intention. Now, with the conventional sense, it's simply the, um, the objects that are generally accepted. And then in the subject, sub, subjective sense is referring to you know the person who is making the definition what they believe or what they feel um is basically what the person who is making the definition believes you know to have those set of attributes so for example we are just using you know the girl scenario so the objective definition of a girl, of a beautiful girl, will be you know, somebody who is, you know, these things are subjective in nature, so it's very hard to be objective about it. But let's say that the, the objective girl, you know, the objectively speaking, a beautiful girl, let's say a beautiful girl could be someone who, who was beautiful. Let's put it that way. So any girl that a boy will see or somebody will see and say like, oh, this is beautiful, it's beautiful. That can be the objective definition or the objective intention of what beautiful girl. In the conventional definition, you realize that in the Ghanaian setting, you realize that this is what Ghanaians accept or conform to. That should be to what? The Ghanaian. So, exactly. So, in the Ghanaian context or African context, you know, the conventional definition of beautiful girl is what? So, with a subjective definition, that will also has to be, even though, you know, in the Ghanaian setting, everyone refers to, you know, girls like that, um, many conventionally, you know, generally speaking, everyone thinks that that's what, that's, what, that's what a beautiful girl is. But the individual might have a different intention when they say beautiful girl. Somebody's own can be what? Slim, short, tall, light skin big guys you know it's a whole lot so when you talk about intentional sense that's what we are referring to so let's take a look at definition by genus and difference yes so our last part definition by genus and difference. One thing we need to know about definition by genus and difference is that they are also called analytical definitions. That's simple to say. So from here, here on out, I'll be saying analytical definitions. Yes, so that it refers to what definition by genus and difference. So the analytical definitions can only be used for complex terms, right? When we say complex terms, it means that complex terms that have more than one or more than two attributes. You know, the attribute that you are referring that, that the term is referring to is more than you know they are multiple and they cannot be used for universal terms so you know so these are limitations limitations we will break that down further now analytical definitions is to do them we need you need only two things you need a genus and you need a species right so think of genus like a class and species like a subclass. So how do you do this? 
when you want to define by genus and difference or you want to define something using an, an analytical definition the first step you need to do is you name a genus right after you've named a genus you identify a specific difference now a genus is simply referring to what a set of objects that possess you know, a set of objects or elements or enti entities that possess a common characteristic now to identify a, a specific difference you are referring to you know the, now the objects that you have identified in that genus even though they all share common characteristic some of them also have further common characteristics so it differentiates so maybe you know this group have character c and characteristic c and these people have character characteristics d so it further differentiates them let's use an example yes so now let's take a look at our example now we said that to use analytical definitions the first thing we must do is to name a genus so here on the board We have genus species, right? So let's name a genus. So let's think what I want to use. Why not? So girls. What do all girls have in common? They are all girls. So how can we further differentiate? You no. Know, even though all girls know they are all fem female, they possess what XX chromosome. What makes them different? You know, girls. So now you can now further group them. And you have light skin girls in my cocoa plantain chips. So I have dark skin girls. Less skin girls and dark skin girls, right? So now this becomes our genus and this our species. So girls, S S chromosome. That's a common feature that they all have. Now we can further break them down to what light skinned girls and dark skinned boys. The same go for boys. But who wants to use boys, right? Girls. So now you can also further do this, right? So let's think girls. You have tall. Tall light skinned girls. And Short ones. No, if if, if I write short, I say like I'm being a bit. Then write cute. Okay. Yeah. Immediately I do this. This no longer becomes, and this would become what a genus, and this will be the species. Right, so it doesn't so okay, again. So what I'm saying basically is that genus species, right? If you want to further break it down, it's not going to be species species. You, you know, it's, it's not going to be subclass subclass. So this will now become your genus, and then we are breaking down into become the species. So genus species, genus species. So that's it. Thank you very much for you know watching this video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, you know, share the video, and tell your friends. Let's all come together and learn. Until next time, thank you.